it's Aaron, aka Bibli53 here, with my giant ism. Um, anyway, I'm making this video today in order to address two things about two YouTubers which you might not know about. The hand motions apparently are good to keep people's attention. Um, Casey Neistat was someone who vlogged every day for a year. Actually, a little bit longer than that if you want to include some... Uh, what is it called? Pre-production? I don't know. Whatever. So this guy got a million subscribers in a month after making his claim uh, sometime into his upload schedule. And turning your everyday life into a video production uh, kind of takes away from the authenticity of real life and it becomes the production because your whole purpose of existing becomes to create the substance, the product, the thing. So as a creative individual and someone who's already been involved in filmmaking and was apparently, from what I can tell, doing quite well for himself, uh, decided to embark upon this and found huge YouTube success. Um, it's unprecedented for individuals on YouTube to get a million subscribers within a month, and he is one of the few people who was able to do it after sequestering the momentum and building up to that, so hats off to Casey Neistat, anyway. Uh, PewDiePie, principal YouTuber, uh, well over uh, 49 million subscribers now, definitely going to touch upon uh, 50 soon, time to come. Um, but as he nears to that, it seems as though in his YouTube career, many, many times throughout this entire thing that he's been doing for eight years now, um, I think he was, what was it, mostly, uh, Fri Five Nights at Freddy's kind of stuff, like, like horror games, horror video games, and like freaking out, and then joking video games, and gross video games, and ragdolls, and jokes, and then sporadic, uh, internet media content, whatever. Um, lots of room there for him to be creative. However, it seems as though he was in one of those upload schedule things with vlogging, and I guess he moved from Brighton or whatever, wherever he was, to LA, I guess for work for the next year or two or something, or maybe for convenience, hard to say. Uh, a lot of people are going to LA uh, and San Francisco, you know, Silicon Valley talent, you're nearer to studios and people who want to work with you. It makes sense. It makes sense if you're successful enough, then you get to hang out with all your corporate friends and neighbors, so to speak. Um, so apparently he's, he's been in that transition. And it has been a bit stifling, and he's decided to not do that vlog. And there was, what was it, I think the original was 20, he was supposed to do like 22 days? It was a month or something like that, or two weeks or three weeks. Uh, whatever the case is, he was going to do that daily, and then it became too much. And I can understand that, because as someone who has a very um, unique... Uh, family, had I been vlogging throughout all of these years, yeah, okay, I'd have a lot to look back on and all these memories and etc. But at the same time, I'm putting my life into a receptacle for other people to view. And without setting up those parameters with any semblance of production value or boundaries or guidelines, and without first sequestering the uh, permission and admonishment or whatever you'd like to call it, the surrender of the moment of individuals so that we could simply go about our business, but in a way that would be more theatrical. It would have been hugely invasive. It would have been hugely alienating, and I decided never to try and do that. Also because um, my parents and my friends are individuals who I'm sure at this point in this culture uh, that we're in uh, would not would not have a great public image, <laughs> especially if they had all of those years cataloged. Yeah, anyway... Um, so, I'm 7 to 11 years in to caring about slash partaking in YouTube, but I don't have a million subscribers, I don't have a sports car, I don't have nice shiny things, I'm not living in LA, um, so why do I care and why am I making this video? Well, it's interesting that these people have found success on the platform, um, and it's interesting that they have done so by their own volition in a creative uh, environment that they have essentially... Uh, created for themselves within the administrative environment of YouTube and as time goes on I'm sure their success will continue and that's what I'm looking forward to their continued success and seeing what they end up producing and it's made me think a lot about what I have done and where I'm at and to be honest I'm kind of glad that I've made the choices that I've had in terms of what I've uploaded and what I have not um, I'd like to be involved in a couple of professional projects, but again, doing that costs money, and you need a team. And also, some notoriety. A little bit of uh, interest goes a long way, and suffice to say, my material is highly cerebral, experimental, and finding editors is very difficult, because usually after I hand somebody a script, or a story, or a video, or anything for opinion's sake, 
uh, they quickly decide that they would not like any more of my material. Now, this is good for the horror genre. This is good for making horror films, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get that opportunity. Um, to be honest, the administrative process of filmmaking is a bit daunting for me, and I would need to uh, isolate the environment with the people whom it concerns um, in order to make the project work so that creative management and things like that don't need to become a concern for anybody and anything because when you want to be a writer you need to uh, give up your words you just give them up and they can do whatever they want with them which is an issue with uh, which is an issue with uh, remasters and rethinking and reworkings of things because the hands by which uh, hold the clay or the painting or whatever whatever hands by which remaster their works become intertwined within and when it comes to culture it's difficult to interweave without superseding you know so I would like to uh, just further I guess in solidarity to myself and to anyone who watches this thank you for watching this and also I would like you to understand that I have not uh, posted content of my own volition because of anything other than completely to do with my own fear concerning the media. Because I don't want to just put whatever out there and anything to do with myself I make contrived and anything to do with others I make contrite because I don't want to alienate anybody. And how are you supposed to do that when you're trying to be public? So it's a tough sandwich to swallow. And I mean very early on into YouTube I had a couple dozen subs and I have had people talk to me about the content. And I gotta tell you uh, their input sometimes is a little bit odd, the conversations were a little bit off-putting, and I distanced myself from it. Honestly, I should have isolated myself more and created more pervasive content. I still want to, but the problem is the perception. So, I may create a new YouTube channel. It may be incredibly unsettling content. It's not going to be for everybody. I may uh, make a commentary channel of sorts. The issue there is, though, that it would be highly academic, and that's essentially inaccessible. So, I'm in a quandary, the same quandary I've always been in. It. I'm looking for teammates, okay? I'm looking for people, creative people, to do something with, to work on something with. I'm looking for editors, I'm looking for friends, I'm looking for awesome pets and animals that I haven't met, and an individual who might maybe want to go uh, on a jet ski. I have no idea, you know? Have a, have a conversation on a waterproof headset on a jet ski. That's, how, that's a business meeting. Get 14 people on the water, all with headsets, and you have that meeting. And you, and you get that work done. <laughs> anyway, I'm joking, um, for the most part, but it does sound like a funny... Funny team building stupid crap. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, th th thanks. Thanks for watching this. I don't know what this was supposed to be. I had 36 minutes of material get deleted, and I didn't want to repost something from 18 years ago, or 5 years ago, or whatever the case. Um, so I hope you found this content engaging. This is me as a human being uh, at some point or another in time and space. And I am Bibli53 signing off. This is Cheeseburger Sunday Special. Here's your holographic autograph. Uh, you're welcome and good day.